there, I'm Becky and welcome to the Vetrit Labs. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to create this game station. It's a real nice simple project uh, and it's the perfect solution to house all of your gaming equipment. So you've got area for your headset and you've got a holder for your games controller. You've got a little bit of LED lighting going on here so it gives it that real kind of cool atmospheric gamer room vibes. So it's very simple project to create. We're going to take a look at how we design that in the software right now. Okay, so we are in VCarve and you can open this file up in Aspire. So the file we're going to open is the gamestation.crv. Okay, so here we have two sheets. So we've got the veneered plywood over on the right hand side and then we also have the actual design. So if we double click on the design and that will activate that sheet for us. Um, we'll just talk a little bit about how I drew up these vectors and why uh, they are the sizes they are. So if we just zoom in onto this um, sheet, so you'll see we've got, we've actually got two bitmaps here. We've got one which is a photograph of the headset and we've also got a photograph of the controller and you'll notice that there are rulers in these photographs so I just used my phone and the key is is when you are working with a project or you're making a project that's going to house a physical item this is a really good technique for you to do is to take a photo of it straight on so dead straight above the item next to a ruler that way when you bring the bitmap into the software using this little icon here, you can bring your bitmap in and then you can size up the bitmap so it accurately represents the actual size of the actual part. So for example, if I draw a rectangle out now on this ruler, so I go up to four inches, you can see it says width four and that's because I've sized up the bitmap uh, to match the actual scale of the actual photograph of the actual thing. So that's how uh, it's a really good technique to do when you are working with items that you need to incorporate into your project, just like this one. We need something that's going to hold a headset. We need something that's going to hold a controller and getting the scale of those images correct in the software makes it a breeze to then go ahead and create our vectors and we can be safe in the knowledge that we know that things are going to be accurately sized and everything should kind of fit with the actual item. So that's what I did. So in terms of the headset, so I drew this kind of rounded shape. Just use the polyline tool. It's a very basic shape. I only drew the left side and then using this line that I've got in the center, I then mirrored this vector over to the right. Uh, that way we've got a nice symmetrical shape as well. And then I joined those vectors and that's pretty much uh, the stand shape. So nothing too fancy here. And then with the controller, so again, I did the, exactly the same, took a photo of the controller straight on with the ruler, and then I laid that against the vector of our um, head, head, like a headset stand, uh, just to see you know, where would that be positioned relative to the overall composition of this head stand and I thought this kind of looks okay. So I know I need to kind of have some kind of um, stand to hold it together so sometimes with stuck together projects it can be a little tricky for me to kind of visualize how something would look so I tend to turn to cardboard and scissors the old-fashioned way mock something up these are my little maquettes and I'm able to see does that is that enough space or is that is that big enough to hold it uh, and you can see I've cut out these little chairs I'm going to call them chairs because they look like little couches and these little cardboard maquettes held this controller perfectly so I thought brilliant so I did exactly the same then with the cardboard maquette took a photo of it dead straight on with the ruler brought that into the software and then sized it up accordingly in comparison with everything else uh, and that just gives me a good uh, visualization for what it is that I need to create so that's pretty much how I sized up the vectors to ensure that we can fit the real items into our project okay so that's pretty much the basics of that so over onto the right hand side with our veneered plywood this is where I kind of took those vectors that we had over there and then actually started arranging them into our project design 
So at the top over here, we have a base. So this is just a, the start of the base. The actual base is over here, but we'll come and talk about that in a second. Okay, so the idea is we're going to have a headstand piece that's going to slot into a slot over here. We're going to have another headstand piece that's going to slot over here. Okay, then we're going to have a gap. Now that gap is um, representative of another piece we're going to slot in between both of those, which is this one over here, and that's going to hold our LED strip. Okay, so I've measured out our LED strip and I've just given it a little bit more wiggle room there uh, to ensure that it does fit on there. And this is the gap that we're left with. So we know we're going to have three pieces of material here. We're going to have the back headpiece, the front headpiece. We're going to have the middle headpiece. It's going to sit in between both of those where the LED strip is going to be wrapped around. Um, and that's going to give it a real nice glow. Okay, and then in terms of the seat, so this is the seat, this is the vector of the seat. I've added an additional quarter of an inch to the base here, and that's just so I know that we've got enough there to actually slot it into the actual base station of our project. Um, and so the length of that represents the length that we've got here so it matches that so these values will always match up with whatever it is it's slotting into now the key thing for you to be aware of is you need to be aware of your material thickness obviously it's going to be different it's more than likely going to be different to what i'm using so my material is 0.625 of an inch thick so you'll notice that my slot vectors if we take a look down here the height is 0.625 because that matches my material thickness. If you take a look here, the width is 0.625. So you're going to need to alter these, only these four vectors according to your material thickness. Otherwise, the length, the longest parts should be exactly the same. So we'll come back to that and I'll show you how to do that in terms of the overall design in a second. Okay, so coming over back over here. So like I said, so we've got the Headstand, we've got a back, we've got a front. Okay, so I just copied those vectors. What I did was I offset this vector inwards by around, I think it was an inch, might be a little bit more actually. Um, and that's just to create this other shape that's going to be um, in sandwiched between those two headpieces so that we can then put the LED strip around it. Um, and because we've got sharp corners at the bottom, you have to be mindful that we remove those sharp corners because when we're inlaying parts into other parts, sharp corners do not inlay very well because we can't cut in the internal of a corner. So what I did was I used the fillet tool. So over in the drawing tab, into the fillet tool, use a normal fillet and we just clean those off at the radius of the tool that I plan to use, which is a quarter of an inch. Okay, so eighth inch radius there. Clean that off, Got a nice curved corner, curved corner here, everything's gonna slot perfectly. And because everything's also symmetrical, everything's gonna fit in either way. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the actual headstand bit. We've got our little couches. So you can see what I've done is I've took these vectors and I've actually just like kind of welded them together. So we've got one piece that looks like this. And then in terms of the actual base station, we've got this square and then we've got our slots. Okay, so if you need to change the slots according to the material thickness you're going to use, all you need to do is go over to the fillet tool. We just need to remove those fillets to begin with. So just simply click like so and you're going to remove them Okay, like this. Close out. Now we're going to go into the size tool. Now I want this gap to stay the same, okay? So this gap needs to stay the same, but we're just gonna alter the uh, thickness here, okay? So in the set size tool, uh, so if you, if, let's say your material is half an inch, what we wanna do is we wanna set the anchor point to the top left or the top right, so we're just moving the bottom up. Uncheck link X, Y, and we're just gonna change that to say five. You'll see it moves that up and then the same for the top one this time you want your anchor point to be at the bottom so we're only moving the top portion down and again we'll just put in 
0.5 in there press apply and it does that okay and you do the same for these slots as well and once you've changed those slots you then need to go into the fillet tool and according to what tool you are using you need to put the radius in and we're going to use dog bone fillet so these are nice for creating clearance uh, in internal corners um, and it's really for slot together projects and it just makes it real really discreet really okay, and then you just pop those fillets back in and that's pretty much it so you just need to make sure that you change the sizes according to your material thickness and you do the same for these slots as well okay so i've just undone all that all of that to suit my material okay we've got some text in here it's very gamer vibes okay so it says game over if you're interested in knowing what the font is the font is ocra extended um and you can see we've got game over in there and we've got, we've got a big gap so i've created that gap manually using the kernel tool okay so this allows you to make space between words or between characters so um holding down shift you see the arrows pointing away from each other uh, and then when you left mouse click you'll see that brings those characters further apart don't hold shift so you only press in the left mouse key click and it brings those words closer together okay so that's all i did there and that looks pretty good okay and that's pretty much it so now i can start to think about the toolpath side of things so let's just switch over to the toolpath tab Okay, so let's just go through the toolpaths. So we've got five different toolpaths. We're using three different tools and we'll talk about the tools as we go through each toolpath. So the first toolpath we've got is the pocket, the headstand. So I think I've just gone into the wrong one there. So that's the pocket slot. So we need pocket headstand. So here we're using a quarter inch end mill. We're gonna cut out at a certain depth in between these two vectors and that's gonna enable us to slot this piece into those parts so how far we go down is actually quite crucial to how we've actually got our design laid out so if we just uh, come on down over to this area here so if we go to our drawing tab we know that if we go to the measure tool we know the distance between here and here is actually 0.368 okay so we want to keep that distance as it is to ensure that uh, our you know our slots are perfect where they are um, and so we need to account for that so if we take the rectangle tool okay and if we just draw a vector just i'm just doing this as a guide okay so just snapping in between those two vectors but now what we're going to do is we're going to change the height of this ensuring that we're scaling out from the center to z equals okay and then press apply okay so it's doing done that there and then we can go back into the measure tool we can measure from this point here to that point there okay so this point here to that point there we've got one two eight five okay we'll do the same here it's there one two eight five so we'll put that in there like so so cut depth one two eight five and then uh, that's we know that's how much we're going to cut into each of these pieces to ensure that this piece can slot into both of those. Now this is obviously down to the material thickness that we're using. So make sure you alter this uh, by just using that same method of drawing up that vector according to the material thickness that you plan to cut into. Yeah, you might want to do just a tiny bit more if you wanted to, if you wanted to use glue, for example, to hold it. But it all depends on how you want to do it. I tend to, I'm not going to use glue because I feel like we're going to have a nice strong hold uh, in terms of the allowance where we've got a negative allowance of 0.006. That's going to uh, overcut that slot by that amount to ensure that this can fit in. So it's not too tight, neither is it too loose but that's totally up to you but just be mindful that obviously you don't want to go uh, too far that you know it doesn't actually the whole part doesn't end up uh, slotting into the actual base okay so we'll close out there so that's pretty much that and go ahead and get press calculate okay so no vectors selected so just take that along with this one over here and then go ahead and press calculate there Okay, and we'll preview that. So just using a, um, a standard down cut end mill 
to cut this out so I'm just going to do that in a few passes I'm using a down cut because we are using veneered ply so on the top surface always use a down cut because that's going to ensure that it's not going to pull or tear up any of that veneer layer on the top surface a down cut for the top side Okay, and then we'll put that in Z and then close out here. We'll just tile our windows. Let's switch over and do a tile there again. Okay, so next up we've got pocket slots. So double click in here. So these are our slots uh, to cut out um, for our all of our pieces to slot into. Okay, so here we're just going to cut down a quarter of an inch using that same end mill. We're going to have another allowance here. I'm just going to have a little bit of a smaller allowance to allow for a much tighter fit. And as always with any slot together products, I do totally recommend that you do test cuts before you take the time to cut everything out and then realise it doesn't fit. So please just, just take one slot, one part and cut that first until you get a real good fit before you cut everything you don't want to waste your time material um, cutting everything out and realizing it doesn't actually fit so disclaimer here make sure you do your test cuts beforehand um, okay so that's pretty much that so to calculate that and um, this is what that looks like so preview here wonderful then we've got a chamfer cut so i thought just to add a little bit of detail to our base we'll go for a chamfer so the chamfer uh, is where we use a v-bit tool and we can cut around something and it's just going to give us a nice angled edge and again with the ply because we are using plywood it's going to kind of reveal those uh, those layers those stripes that i really love in plywood so it should give us a real nice effect there so we specify the tool so in this case it's 60 degree half inch v bit okay and then we specify um the width or the or the, the depth here okay so you can alter each one and it will alter the other so in this case i want the width to be 0.2 of an inch which is automatically calculates that depth there for us based on the actual angle of and the dimensions of our tool specify the type so we want this to go on the outside of those vectors sloping downwards so you can see this graphic clearly illustrates that so this pink is your vector if you come over here we can see we've got arrows saying it's going to go downwards in a downward slope just like the graphic suggests there okay and then we'll calculate that and preview that and you can see what that looks like so it's going to give us a nice angled edge there which looks real nice put that in z and then we'll go into the vcarve toolpath so double click on that so we've got the game over text using the exact same tool there calculate that and then preview it and we can see what that looks like and then finally we've got our profile cutout where it's going to cut all of our parts out so in this case we're going to cut all the way through our material and we're going to use a compression tool this time so rather than just using the down cut because we're cutting uh, all the way through our material so in theory we're cutting on both sides of our material um, we want to make sure that the tool uh, is able to really kind of retain uh, the nice veneer finish that we've got so by using a compression bit what that has is at the bottom of the tool it has an up up cut part and then on the top towards the top of the tool it's down cut so it's both up and down cutting and so that just ensures that when we're cutting the top surface uh, we've got the downward side of the tool cutting into that and where we're cutting right at the bottom we've got that up cut part of the tool that's pulling uh, all of the material upwards so we shouldn't get any kind of fraying so because we are using a compression bit if you go to edit passes i've had to edit the first pass to go a little bit deeper to ensure that when we go in we're actually where it's going in it's past the upcut part of the tool and it's actually going to be uh, making connection with the downward part of the tool so it's pushing all of that material down on the top surface and everything is going to be pushed up on the bottom surface Okay, um, we're machining that on the outside, 
add in tabs, so I've got tabs all in position there so you can edit these if you wanted to. We've also got ramp and leads, so we're going to add a ramp to the toolpath, so rather than it plunging directly in, we're actually just allowing that to ramp in at a kind of a diagonal motion. This is just really good for the wear and tear of the tool. We're also adding in leads, so we're actually starting in away from our pieces uh, so we're not cutting directly next to the vector to begin with so we're not making that entry point there we're just taking it a little further out where it's going to basically lead into the actual cut and this just kind of preserves the actual edge quality of your cut as well uh, and that's pretty much that so here we'll go ahead and press calculate and we can take a look at what we've got there so if we just zoom in we can see we've got zoom out there so we've got our leads which you can see it's kind of in a round so it's going to start over here and it's going to lead into the actual cut and then it leads back out and that's pretty much it okay so we'll preview that see how that looks there's all of our tabs it's looking pretty awesome happy with everything there and again if you want to have a go at cutting this then please make sure that you do your test cuts to begin with to ensure everything fits nice before you go ahead and take all that time into machining everything else so at this stage i think it's a good idea to go ahead and save out our tool pass and then we'll go meet you over in the labs Okay, so we're going to start by using our quarter inch tool. So this is a down cut bit, so it's going to push and compact down all of those top layers on our surface of our plywood. We're going to cut the two pockets, so the pocket for the headstand uh, base shapes. We're also going to do the pockets for the slots where the, uh, the actual head shape along with the controller stand is going to slot into. So we'll get that loaded and then we'll run those two tool pads. So now that we've cut the pockets, we're now going to do a tool change. We're going to switch over to this V-bit tool and we're going to look at creating a chamfer for the base. So hopefully that 30 degree angle is going to give us a real nice look with the stripes that we get from the plywood. Uh, and then we're going to go into that V-carve uh, for the text where it says game over. So we'll load that up and then get those tool paths running. Okay, so now that we're done with the V bit, it's time to switch over to our compression bit. So we're using a quarter inch compression bit to run our profile cutouts. Now the reason why we're using a compression bit as opposed to a up cut or a down cut bit is because it has both the up cut and down cut, which is perfect for plywood and layered materials. The bottom portion of the tool is cutting upwards. The top portion of the tool is going downwards. So it's going to really compress those layers in those directions, which should mean that we have a nice clean cut with no frays uh, or ragged edges. So we'll go load that up and then we'll get that toolpath going.
everything fits together nicely. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our LED strip around the inside of our headphone stand. Uh, so I've just got this uh, one meter strip from Amazon. You can get them anywhere really, Amazon, eBay, uh, your local kind of electronic shops. And this one actually plugs into a USB slot. So this will be perfect next to, again, console. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of measure out what it is that we need. We're gonna cut the strip where we need it to. It's got like a sticky back in so we can uh, fix that to the inside of that headstand. right then I love the way that this looks the LEDs really give it that nice gamer room glow it would, it would look really nice next to your games console now in terms of the design I actually really like kind of the plainness that we've got there however there is a lot of room for customization with this project in particular if you take a look at this area over here you could potentially um, customize it with someone's name or you could v-carve someone's gamer tag in there just to give it that little bit of personalization and this actually got me thinking now you can probably hear there's a lot of noise going on next door now ollie's actually machining on one of our other machines and he's cutting one of design and makes new gamer projects so it's given me the idea perhaps we could include a 3d element to a new version of this so we'll go over and ask him if he can cut us something special There we have it, we've got two different game stations. We've got the original one out of that plywood. I really love the contrast that we've got there. Uh, and we did speak about how we've got this area to create some personalization if you wanted to. So remember, if you want, you can tweak the file, add a little bit of v-carving in there, put a gamer tag in that place, uh, which also led us to explore this idea. And you can see how well the clip art that we've got from Design & Make sits in with in our uh, game station it really gives it that cool vibe there and if you have got a spire and you don't really use the modeling tools or you don't have a spire so you don't have any modeling tools then i totally recommend that you go to the designer make store i've got a whole library of cnc ready clip art uh, that's perfect for any sort of projects just to apply uh, those models onto so that completes this video. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to have a go at creating your own version of your game station, then head over to your VNCO account where you can download the project files from there. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then hit that subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.